Mm -hmm. Friends, this is Don Agreement. It took me a moment to remember what show this was. <laughs> Don Agreement at D&D 5e Actual Play, The Book of Zazit, Chapter 5. Uh, unless Dave absolutely speed runs this, I think it's unlikely that this will be his final episode, but it'll be coming soon-ish. Uh, you've seen a couple finales this week. Unfortunately, Spoon will not be showing up on this one to speedrun it. So, you'll have to hold it together. Well, I haven't been able to catch up on the episodes yet, so I All literally right. have no idea what you're talking about. But Good, you're better off. I know I know that he appeared on James's show. But, yeah. Um, yeah. Never again. Really? <laughs> we're okay. never letting Spoon out to help other people. We're, we're, Why? Because he just he just fucking annihilates. We'll put him in. We, no, no, he's staying in the dog cage. Okay, all right. We can't let him out. He's an animal. <laughs> he ruins everything. Uh, what? What is he? A half orc paladin? Of course he. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah naturally, that's how this shit works. <laughs> half orc. Half orc. Uh, fighter. Anything like that. Destroys straight up. Yeah, best thing ever. Well, you were saying that you made some changes between last time and this time. What do you got? Yeah. Um, so I, I hit level three. Oh, you took uh, levitate as your second yeah. level spell? Mm -hmm. Wow. That's pretty unusual for you. I would have thought you'd be a little more uh, murder based. Uh, I mean, so levitate can be evil. <laughs> if you think yeah. about it. Okay. Think, think about it for a second. Like, uh, uh -huh. what is the worst way to die in this game? Uh, your soul is removed from your body, and okay. you are placed within a gem. Sure. Left to suffer was, eternally. Yeah, you were going to say falling like... damage, but that's because you're a simple man, and you don't understand yeah. that there are some things that are worse than death. <laughs> <laughs> you think as a necromancer, you'd know that, but... Uh, oh, I mean, I haven't done very much spell slinging in this game. <laughs> so, That's okay. I think I so your plan is to levitate spells. people up 20 feet and then drop them down for 2d6 damage? Uh, levitate them uh, in place is more of a CC for me than anything okay. else. So you're just going to have them just stay up there while they go, huh, what's going on? <laughs> yep, and then okay. I deal with all the other things and then I... Go about my business. That'd be so. great, unless they're an archer, in which case you're in a lot of trouble. I wouldn't levitate the archer. I'd levitate the fighter. I see. All right. Well, you find yourself in the midst of a storm. The crew is calling everyone on deck, all hands, and you hear something coming down. At first, you think it's rain droplets, but then it sounds a bit more like hail hitting the side of the ship. All right. That's what cool. do you do? I mean, I don't know if you just hands. ignore it and go back to sleep. Sometimes you, uh, <laughs> you don't care about uh, what some might call earthly concerns. I mean, it really depends on whether or not this is life threatening. So I will go investigate that particular aspect of uh, uh, of this scenario. So. Your ship is rounding the Gith coast uh, at the point of Gith, and. Even with the land close enough that you should be able to see it, the horizon is darkened. At first, you think that you're in some sort of odd storm. But then you notice what's happening is droplets of salt water from the ocean are forming into reverse rain and forming storm clouds above you. The so rain As is going up and then coming the down? Rain is, no, them? no, it's, the rain is not coming down. What's falling down is granules of salt. Is this like a is this like a spell thing? Is there like an arcane presence? Well, wait, 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 like but let, let, let me finish. First off, this for this ain't normal. You know, rain doesn't fall up into the sky. Um, as the salt is coming down, it has reached terminal velocity and is shredding the sails of the ship. And so all of the sailors are trying to bring the canvas in as quickly as possible. But what's already up there is is basically wrecked. Now, the ropes seem to be holding for now, but pretty much everyone out here 
has wounds cut by salt, which themselves, the wounds are then instantly salted. And so it's incredibly painful stinging. So everyone <laughs> out here is in a bad mood. The ship is not like rocking. There's no wind. You know, it's the weirdest storm you have ever been in. And you've been in some pretty weird stuff. Uh, is this magical? Yes, it definitely is. Would you like to know more? I would like to know more. How would you, do, are you going to use magic to determine magic? Or are you looking for a more practical scientific solution? Which is, I mean to say, would you like to investigate with your arcane senses or with your Sherlock Holmesian ones? Mm, I was just looking if I have like any counter magic stuff. I don't think it, I know I have it on my list to get. Okay, Blue Mage, calm down, calm yeah. down. You had the option to take counter spell and you chose not to. <laughs> not right now, but you know, I can, I can just. <laughs> Bye. No, um, basically what I would like to see is, um, is there, like, I want to know specifically, is there any sort of caster in the vicinity that's causing this particular anomaly to happen around Make us? Make a perception check. Okie dokie. Did you remove the dice or something? I don't see what? the dice anymore. Oh, yeah, I removed that. Um, the 3D dice thing? The 3D okay. dice thing, because it doesn't update for the Game Master. The Game Master has to switch scenes in order for the dice to appear in the chat uh, box. Okay. It's a well, bug. I'm sure they'll fix it. Uh, yeah, you did get a 19. Can I also ask you to make a constitution saving throw real quick? Uh, the damage type is poison, so if you have any resistance to that, you will get advantage on this check. Uh... I know I have some resistance. I can't actually remember what. Poison. Oh, sorry. No, I don't. I don't, I don't think that's it. the case. I think it's. I think that girl is dangerous. But what do I know? Yeah, you know what I I'm mean, talking I, about. I, I, yeah, I have. Uh, I do have like. Um. I do have natural armor. But I don't think that's that comes not going to help you. No. All right, no. make that constitution right. save. Roger that. Okay, you don't take any damage from the falling. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just like literally walking salt. out there and everyone's like, ah! and I'm, I'm just like, my, it's just like bouncing off my skin, you know? <laughs> That's um, not skin, it's like scales or whatever. But yeah. There are no casters in the immediate vicinity. Whatever magic this is, it is on such a grand scale that the person who has made it does not even need to be here. In fact, this may not even be casted by a single person. You mm. you come to a conclusion that this may just be one of those planar tears going insane. Like, this may just be an interaction with the plane of water. All right. Is there any sort of, like, anchor to the ship that this spell is attached to or something like that? No. It is. It has nothing to do with the ship itself. It's this area, this location. Just it extends in every direction as far as you can see, which again is no longer that far because of the salt rain and the, you know, dark sky. So I'll walk over to the captain and I'll literally be like, "Why did you drive into this?" It's it suddenly start. Okay, so Captain Saren, you know, with this turtle back, goes, huh, "It just suddenly started." Of course we didn't drive into it like this. Do you think I'm a madman? Weird things like this have been happening all the time. Isn't that why you're here? No. Oh. I'm... Are you sure? Very much so. All right. I guess my instructions were wrong. <sighs> well, weird things like this have been happening, and we need someone to, you know... Do you have any magic that can help us? Like maybe a shield that can block the salt rain? <laughs> like I'm standing there, like literally in the rain and the salt is bouncing off of me and I'm just like, you think I can shield the entire ship from salt rain? I don't know what the extent to your practitioner powers are, Masters as it. If you can't do it, you can't do it. 
If you'll excuse me, then, I need to pass some orders to the crew. Uh, and he begins <laughs> giving them orders to bring in the I canvas. I love the idea that, that I've cast Minor Illusion to make a shield appear around the ship that does absolutely <laughs> fucking nothing. <laughs> um, he orders not, everyone... Yeah, I'm not. I'm not that pathetic. <laughs> I'm going to do that. He orders everyone below decks except uh, one sentry who's supposed to make sure nobody boards the ship. You know, one unfortunate. Everybody is giving that person their cloaks, and someone hands him a set of goggles, so that he can remain up here without his precious, precious flesh being cut by razor sharp salt droplets, moving at 160 miles an hour. Mm. Um, I'll just, you know, as I'm walking past, I'll just like, uh, I'll just throw a resistance on this guy. Oh, let me see what that does. It's just, uh, you know, he gets a bonus, uh, like a, um, advantage on a, uh, constitution saving throw or something like that when he goes to. Oh, he gets a D4 to a saving throw. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's only one time, and it's only for one minute. <laughs> oh, is it? Okay. It's a, he, it's feels okay. A, he feels a little bit better. He feels a little bit better for a little while, yeah. Um, <laughs> as you head below decks, you realize that your power has increased. Uh, awoken by this nonsense, you realize that you have uh, gained knowledge of new spells that you had previously only dreamed of. And more importantly, you have uncovered the secret to a spell you would have learned in the future, but you have instead studied your own prophecy to gain knowledge of it. Summon Familiar <laughs> Altar, which you would have been taught by your master, who has not yet had the chance to do it. <laughs> instead, he bound to you a magical skeletal seahorse. A Kelpie. The Kelpie. Well, it's the skeleton of a Kelpie, so it's not as terrifying. <laughs> Because an actual Kelpie is, like, super evil. <laughs> uh, so Summon Familiar Altar will allow you to... Uh, it's like Summon Familiar, but it's a second level spell. Um, you don't need to sacrifice anything for it. Like, you don't need to spend money to do it. You, do, you can only right. use skeletons you have access to. So in this case, you are limited to summoning a fish. The zombie, uh, sorry, a fish skeleton, a zombie nursemaid shark, a uh, fresh or saltwater eel, or an albatross, as you're familiar. Uh, its soul will be replaced by the soul of an ancient necromancer who has yet to finish paying the price for their crimes. That's me. Summon familiar, second level. Summon familiar altar. Alter. Okay. Yep. It's an altered version specific for necromancy. Sick. All right. So, oh, okay. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, oh, it's... Okay, that's how you do it. Okay. Necromancy. Is it verbal? Ah, uh, it doesn't matter. You know what I mean? Like, you'll cast this one time and you'll gain your familiar. Roger. Okay. It is verbal. Uh, Takes 10 is minutes. This, is this different from the book that I got? Or is this the, like the reward? The prophecy book people? that you got contains uh, cryptic messages of what your life has been and will be in the future. And it, it contained enough of a description of this spell that you could learn it. Okay. Um, and is this different from the reward that I got for getting the uh, romance symbol for the guy? Technically, that was the kit that... <laughs> All right, so remember that time is being messed with here because it's prophecy. Your mm. current reward from your, let's not call it, master research associate was the skeleton, the ability to summon a skeletal seahorse that can both run on land and water. This is a future reward you will get or you will have gotten in some time in the future that you are learning from either yourself or whoever wrote this prophecy. Okay. So, so 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 your your senior research associate would have taught this to you if you hadn't already taught it to yourself. I see. Maybe I can use this as a bargaining chip. We'll see. Okay. 
Uh, okay, so... Well, yeah, you can approach I'll, him and be like, my powers have doubled since last we met. <laughs> you still owe me a spell. That I don't know. Uh, yeah, okay. So, I guess I'll, um, you know, head downstairs. I mean, like, we're just stuck here, right? So... Yes, they're anchoring down as best they can. So, okay, my understanding of what I was tasked with doing is, like, finding more allies or at least bringing more of the uh, non-humanoid races along the coastline into Correct. the Dawn Agreement. That's, you know? that's your overt mission. Your covert mm -hmm. mission is to figure out what's happening with the plane of water and all right. these weird occurrences. Okay. So, so that's your secret um, mission. So you said I can I can summon a... A shark, yes. Familiar? You can summon a zombie nursemaid shark. Now, just to be clear, a zombie nursemaid shark is like this long. Oh, okay. Right, okay. I thought but I could use a, it as it's an underwater a, mount. No. Yeah. Your, your skeletal horse will do that for you. Great. Yeah. Okay. So, so familiars typically aren't mounted because they're, you know, palm sized. However, you know, you can cast spells through them, you can see through their eyes, etc. You can use their mm -hmm. senses. And in this case, a necromancer will inhabit it, who, you know, you can talk to, gain knowledge okay. from, command. So, the guy's looking out at the ocean. I'm just going to go to the other side of the boat real quick yeah. and just summon this dude out into the water, the nursemaid shark. And I right. specifically, I'm going to... You mm -hmm. have three options as to which necromancer you would like to insert into your nursemaid shark zombie. And it's, it's a permanent insertion to the zombies? Yes, it's permanent. You and this person's fate will be bonded together. Your souls will be tied for all time. So every time I summon, it would be this necromancer? Correct. You can even change okay. the form of your summon, but the necromancer will always be the same one. Okay. All right. You have Numia the Ill-Timed, uh, a necromancer named Beralt, and he who cannot be named. Wasn't that the... Okay. Hmm. Uh, what was the first guy? Uh, Numia the Ill-Time. She's a female necromancer. Uh, she was tried for her necromantic crimes about 12,000 years ago by the elves. Let's go with, I mean, what do I know about the second one? Uh, Beryl. Uh, yeah, so Beryl uh -huh. is a necromancer from about 4,000 years ago. Uh, he is a halfling, a hobbit necromancer. Uh, he never accomplished, like, any truly heinous or evil deeds. That wasn't really his jam. He didn't, you know, he wasn't executed or tried or caught or anything. So what he did was he turned a bunch of, like, mice skeletons into his servants and used them to keep his home tidy because he was too lazy to do it himself. So he essentially created a massive army of hundreds of woodland creatures who would serve his increasingly massive estate. And the last one, he or she had not be uh, named. No, no, he who cannot be named. Now, technically, cannot he does named. have a name, but his necromantic title was he who cannot be named. Uh, his name is Tao Mata Waka Taingihang Gakau Ua Ua Ota Mate Ati Ripu Uka Kapi Iki Maunga Horo Nuku Hokai Wenuak Kitana Nata Ahu. So they called him he who cannot be named because most people didn't want to use 85 letters to address someone every time they wanted to say hello. <laughs> it's not a title and it's a title gained. <laughs> uh, so he is a necromancer that died about 817 years ago. He's not the first human necromancer, but he's probably the most famous one. Um, he was considered to be... Uh, a bad person, but not necessarily evil. So he created a kingdom of like casual undeath and monstrous people. So somewhere out in the world, you can see here that there's a badlands that's basically uninhabited. Uh, he became a lich, which is where you remove your living soul from your body, let your body die, and then stick your soul back in your dead body, uh, and control it magically. So once he did that, he invited like vampires, werewolves, whites, intelligent undead 
to form like a national community with him it was not popular among them you know there's a lot of arrogance and ego involved in undeath but he did get enough of a following uh eventually some paladins showed up uh it was a tough battle they all got wiped out uh the paladin order was basically almost completely annihilated he never really did anything that anyone would consider to be like outrightly villainous he sounds um, like an isekai character <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was reincarnated say, uh, but... as a skeleton, so I formed my own country. <laughs> ah, so, like the slime, yeah. Um, so, uh, I was going to say, Arthur, it sounds a lot like the Campaigners Guild, but, you know, that's... <laughs> Wait, Campaigners Guild? Yeah. <laughs> the... Whoa, 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 whoa. The, listen, <laughs> campaign... This is, this is my recole recollection of Campaigners Guild. Correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> You and several others spent months convincing the general tabletop RPG community on Twitch that wasn't like it me JP to come together to do like a mutual shared channel team thing. And yep. then everyone couldn't agree on what days people would stream. Like people wanted it's like only I'm allowed to stream at Tuesday at eight. And I avoided no, that. Part. It wasn't that it, they didn't want to share audience. That's OK. That's then what's the point of being a team all right so i was fully committed to this i was ready to do yeah. it and I then too, man. somebody was it swargula called uh him blubber Baba yeah who was it Baba Nasco? no bubbernaut yeah like bubbernaut yeah. bubbernaut was it swargula who called him blubbernaut because he's overweight and, and uh, he's not just anymore, like, but yeah yeah he lost yeah. like 300 pounds it's incredibly impressive he's doing a great job um mm. But this was like five, six years ago, Dave. So, so I can't, I think it was Swargula, but if I'm wrong, Swarg, don't let me hold you to that. Someone insulted Bub, and when he pulled out, pretty much the entire thing collapsed in two days. I had one stream as a Campaigners Guild member before it collapsed. Yeah, man, it was... Uh... So how does this it... relate to... to oh, because there was a bunch of in? egos crashing oh, together. Yes. <laughs> well, that, listen... <laughs> there was a lot of shit going on that I was not a part of. I was just, I showed up and I was like, hey guys, I'm excited to be here. I'm glad we could all come together and broadcast together. And everybody else was like, fuck you, you motherfucker. I get Tuesday at 8 o'clock. And I was like, no, no but I'm it, glad it to work a, with you. <laughs> it literally wasn't that. We set up a system for sharing audience members. And they're like, why would I send my audience to another streamer? They'll steal them. It was literally like that. I was oh, like, oh my, my god! god. I don't understand this concept of stealing audiences eh, when, it was, when people it was, are it was like, "These slutty thoughts are stealing my audience," and I was like, "Dude, the kind of person who's watching that is not going to watch you play NBA Jam. All right, you're not exactly. that good. Nobody's that good." It was it was literally <laughs> a case of like, um, all tides rise, raise all ships, right? Yeah. The high, high tide raises. Well, that listen, was the Dave, there's nothing you could say here that I'm not going to agree with you on because I <laughs> did agree with you on it. And everybody else is too busy drilling holes in the side of the ship so that they could get their piece of cork. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, man, I tried God. real hard with that. Campaigner yeah, skilled. Just remember, I agreed instantly. You were like, hey, let's form a, a stream team. I was like, I don't know anything about that. Let's do it. I agree. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, All right, so you're going to figure out which one of these three necromancers you want. Numia, the ill-timed, Beryl, or so, he who cannot be named? Um, specifically, I don't know if I can interview them or anything like that, but if I can, it would be along the lines of something like, which, which of you knows the most ancient magics? Because I'm more interested in knowledge than I am in... Uh, collaboration with someone else and if i can give you another chance at life in exchange for your knowledge i will all right so he who cannot be named only lived 817 years ago so his ancient magic knowledge is kind of weak he did learn a lot from some of his companions uh Beralt, again not not really an all-powerful he, he lived the longest but he did the least right like <laughs> I mean, it depends on what you believe the least is. Beryl feels that his life went well, and yes, he is suffering a torment for the crime of using necromancy, right? His soul is being held until he finishes repenting, but he doesn't feel he has anything to repent for. He lived a good life, 
He got to have cheese and tea every day delivered to him by his mice friends. He, he literally know, were... invented mice god, mouse god and now he's in hell <laughs> having to like entertain people forever. <laughs> you could make him an albatross. Uh, Numia the ill-timed definitely has ancient magical knowledge. Um, mm -hmm. That's that's what I was thinking would so be the most appropriate. Thing. She's like a 14th generation elf after they landed here from the stars. Uh, so, she, I mean, she's got the old magics under her repertoire for sure. But she is called Numi the Ill-Timed because, you know, she was practicing necromancy secretly and then accidentally used it in public once to save a child's life. And then the elves fell on her immediately with swords and stabbed her until she couldn't move. And she was then tried shortly after and killed. And, you know, there was a there was a long, controversial hundreds of years of elven philosophy and law were around. If you use necromancy for good, is necromancy truly evil? In the end, they came to the agreement that, yes, like dark magics should definitely be banned, even if you use them to save the life of an innocent child who was hit by a cart. Uh, Numia is a little arrogant and condescending. You know, she, she, out of the, uh, between, <laughs> between you and her, she definitely feels like she's the more powerful necromancer. You know what I mean? Like, well, you're the one inside of a fish. Oh, so you're settling on Numia? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, I mean, look, she can't go against you. She's your familiar, but that doesn't mean she has to like it. So you reach down into the water and you pick out this zombie nursemaid shark. Have you seen a nursemaid shark before? I just want to make sure they're we're like, on this. They're like those little reef sucker things, right? Like, Yeah, I mean, so they they hang out near bigger sharks and eat their garbage. It's pretty sick, actually. It's a good way to go. Yeah, I think I think I think these are the sucker things that I was thinking of. Hang on. Yep, they're the one the exact ones I was thinking of, yeah. And they got right. like little tiny like Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. So you Mustache. come up with this like two foot long nursemaid shark with Numia the ill time soul inside of it. Its mouth opens and its gills move, but they're all zombie like and Numia is just like <laughs> You have chosen well, Sazit. Soon, I, your new master, shall bestow upon you a title, once you show me your true magical powers. Of course, this is all mentally, you know, sent to you. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm just like, well, I didn't choose a master. I chose someone who can be an infinite wealth of knowledge for me. So if you play your role, you'll get exactly what you want. She doesn't reply to that. And replying to it would mean acknowledging that you're in a superior position over here. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, <clears throat> you can fill your role immediately for me. I'm going to throw you into the water now, and you are going to search for the source of this kerfuffle above me. Okay. She can't disobey you because she's your familiar. <laughs> <laughs> so she begrudgingly begins uh, a spiral pattern search. You know, that's where you go in an increasingly widening circle uh, mm -hmm. underneath the ship. And every five minutes, she reports back to you. Now, that'll only work as long as she's within a mile of you. Once she's past that point, she'll have to swim directly back towards you in order to report to you. Mm -hmm. I just want to know if there's, like, we're passing, like, some sort of, like, crack in the ether that's in the water or some shit like that. That, that is almost triggers. certainly... Yeah, that's almost certainly what it is, just to be clear. But let me make yeah. let me make a roll on her behalf for her arcana. Nope. <laughs> she uh she rolled a two, so never mind. She doesn't have a fucking clue what's happening right now. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Alright, we'll get we'll how long do you want to wait for her response? I mean I go all the time in the world sitting on a boat that's not moving, so All right. <clears throat> About an hour and a half later, uh you sense her presence. She's basically attached herself to the barnacles under the keel of the boat and is just mm -hmm. riding along with the boat. <laughs> she says, <clears throat> Zazit, yeah. I cannot find the source of magic. It is not here at the surface level, but deep, far deeper into the water. Are you scared of the deep? What's stopping you from going down? Are you murdering me? 
Zaz is just like, you know, Robert Downey Jr. like frustrated, like, oh, fucking Jesus. It's like, I didn't think I had to. I thought someone of your renown would have a little bit of initiative to go ahead and do these things. Make an intimidation check real quick. <sighs> wow. Look at this shit talker. Someone with your renown. Okay. okay. You hear nothing further from her as she begins to dive deep, deep <laughs> down into the water. We're talking, listen, she's so mad, she's going to marry on his trench. She's going she's gonna to bottom out. And you know, because she's a zombie, <laughs> she doesn't have to worry about pressure. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> she also doesn't have to feels. worry about being eaten either, because even if she's eaten, she'll still suffer eternally in its stomach. Mm. <laughs> and the only pressure she feels is from me right now, so it's that, fine. Well, that's true. That's true. I will let you know when she returns to the surface to speak with you once more. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, so um, I'm going to then, you know, after about an hour or two, if she doesn't come back, I'm going to whip out the coin. Okay. And As you like, whip out the coin, someone appears. Uh, hello? Is this Mr. Zazit? You should know that already. Well, yes. hi, I'm from the Dawn Agreement. I'm Operator 29 here. I just wanted to let you know that there is a uh, demonic incursion happening in Stormwell right now. Uh, followers of the Cult of Jubilix appear to be taking uh, innocent practitioners of magic and uh, killing them in order to gain their magic. Uh, it seems like one of our operatives has been kidnapped. Maybe the situation's resolving itself? I'm not really sure, but... Uh, you should be on the watch. Anyway, what can I do for you? Yeah, I'm stuck in the middle of the ocean on a boat that doesn't move. I was thinking maybe you had something in your repertoire that you could send me to, I don't know, shield a ship or repair some sort of uh, sail, skin. I don't know what they're called. Oh, but, I can um, definitely send you a, uh, a sail if you'd like. I don't know. I we could also send a boat to rescue you, if you know your coordinates. No. no, these people, I want them to be indebted to me. It makes my life a lot easier, so... Okay, that sounds really manipulative, but uh, you're the field operative. All right, so, look, if you'll just uh, just stay on the line here, <laughs> don't let go of the coin. It'll still work for the next five minutes. I'm going to go see if I can wrangle up a sail and send it to you, all right? Just... Hold on there, Mr. Zazit. Oh, and uh, at the end of this, please make sure to fill out a courtesy card next time you're in the Orocosian Empire. Send it to the professor. Let her know Operator 29 went above and beyond for you. Okay, I'm just going to leave you right here. Don't move. Start eating an apple. <laughs> <laughs> About four that minutes old... later, yeah. Yeah. He, he has like 50 pounds of sail he's dragging behind him. And, you know, he's like struggling, but then like one part of it touches the coin and the whole thing just gets sucked through like a blender. So during that time, I would have walked into the captain's office, you know, and I've been like, I got to, I have sold the problem. There's sail everywhere. The captain is just covered in sail. Like he's, the force of it knocks him down onto his desk. What the hell? To sail. Now you don't have any problems. We had spare sails, as it. Although this, this is pretty good quality, and it looks like it hasn't been used before. Wow, it's a, it's a good color. <laughs> you hear Operator Twenty Nine going. Just remember the courtesy card. I like hang up like that. Like, <laughs> you know, it's, it's like, my you know, it's like, well, I'm not familiar with what you're doing about. Anyway, enjoy right, the sale. It's, listen, we don't have a lot of extra sales, so this is very helpful. Thank you very much. Hey. Getting, getting thanked for my work. I can, I can get down with that. I understand that the crew are calling you the King of Mayo. I, I told them it should have been the ruler of mayonnaise. It's more regal. Very well. I will order them to call you the ruler of mayonnaise. I just want no, to let you know. It. It's, I it's, appreciate it's, what you've done. It's done very good things for raising the crew morale. And it's also enabled us to make grilled cheese sandwiches. Surprise, you still have bread. It's hard tech, so it's questionable to call it bread. Mm -hmm. But with hot cheese and mayonnaise on it, 
it's certainly somewhat more palatable. So what's our situation? Are we stuck here for a very long time? Have you been? I'm not sure before? how long this would last. Sometimes these things last hours. Sometimes it's days. Obviously, it's been getting worse lately. We've got plenty of supplies. Unless you desperately need to get to Gith, we can just remain here for however long it takes. If not, we can try to lend you a rowboat, and I'll get my crew to get you as close to Gith as possible. Well, I actually have my familiar in the ocean right now looking for the source of this, so if she comes back... <clears throat> Very well. Hopefully I can solve this problem. All right. Well, I'm going to get someone to take the sail out of my quarters. Okay. <sighs> so he has two stewards come in and grab the sail and move it to position it so it can be brought up on deck just as soon as this is over. Uh, many hours later, the next day, actually, right around what would be daybreak, if you could see the sun, which you can't, uh, blue, just a pair of floating blue eyes made of, like, menacing energy appear in your quarters, and you hear a voice say, So, Zazit, you have sent a familiar down to me. Okay, who might you be? It is I, your senior research associate, Lord Theodemar Leo Lear. Why are you making my life miserable by wrecking the ocean with storms and hail? Let me ask you a question, Zezit. What do you care for the affairs of those on the surface? I happen to be from the surface. Do and you? That's your people live in the rivers of the Gonog jungle, do they not? I have more refined taste than my people tend to have. But you could survive underwater. For all of 13 minutes. It would not be difficult for you to surface and then come back down, correct? Like any other water animal. What's your point? You You're trying to down. feed me the, the ocean pill? Like, what's going on here? We have much to discuss. Okay. You are seeking the source of what is causing the disturbances in the sea. It oh, is I. How astute of you. You're the source, huh? I am the source of this magic. Okay, and what do you gain by troubling, as you say, the surface? All right, now, if this was a TV show... I want to be clear that Theo Demar's theme would start playing right now, and it would be super fucking evil. It would be like a violin and pipe organ gothic duet going on right now. <clears throat> this world is imperfect. Once my people ruled this land, all of these lands. Now I am the last of my race, doomed to an eternal midnight. What materials I require in order to further my research can only be found on land. But what if I was to raise the seas to make the land underwater? I could then transit it as I wished. I have been seeking allies among these islands, others who are not troubled by the raising of the seas, and those who are not my allies I make into my servants. You could survive in this new world. The perfect evolution of living life. So I have a question for you. I don't know if you've fully thought this out, but the materials you have me hunting for, these books, these romance novels, etc., they tend to come from people of great peace. That's generally when they can write such things. Is this the really book I asked want? you to find was written by me. <laughs> <laughs> it is the last remembrance of my people. I wrote it for those around me. A work of fiction, yes, but based in fact. What I ask you to find on Gith will not be some book. It will be an object of great power. 
which will be of use to both of us. But you should know what you are getting yourself into. You suspect that I am a druid, correct? Somewhat. You are wrong. You have failed to see the signs of true necromancy. For I am not just a sea elf, but I am a vampire. I have lived a hundred of your lifetimes, a thousand. Before your people walked this world, I was old. And when I am done, only those who can survive in a world of water will be surviving. I will bring back the sea elf race. We will no longer be enthralled by the machinations of our elven brethren, and all of the plains will bow before me and my chosen lords. Well, there'll be nothing to rule over if it's all underwater. Zezit, I am a sea elf vampire. The water is where I live. Many vampires cannot survive in a moving current, but the ocean is still where I am deep. You could become like me. You could also become a vampire. Immortal. So let me ask, let me ask you something. Uh, this, is, this, is, this is sort of a question that's burning me. What exactly do you do with your infinite time? I am planning to revive an entire race of people. I have gathered servants across the continent. I have, have you fulfilled pursued your... incredible magics. Ah, see, now that, that's something that I'm interested in. The incredible magics, Pong. I, I don't know. Look I outside, I you can see off. the movement of my magic. Yeah, I know, the salt thing, very impressive. Thank you. Yes. Um, though it has hindered my progress, I don't know why you did it, but is it, was it a show of force? This is bad timing. Oh, I see. So, this, uh, this magic stuff, like, have you stopped pursuing it over your lengthy tenure on the planet? I'm literally just employed you to help me search for magical items. Mm -hmm. My power I'm willing is to do this. Great. This, this sounds this sounds great to me. Um, however, I do have a request. Yes. I would like to have land, walkable land in this new world of yours. Very well. What they now call mountains will soon be yours to rule over. Great, as long as we can make all the things that I've come to love about the human race up there, I think we'll be fine. Wait, what do you like about humans? They're filthy and disgusting and they smell bad. Have you ever had a pastry before? No. Ah, see, if you were to come to the surface with me and go to a <clears throat> human town, I Zazit. could get you one of these pastries, yes. I can't eat human food. I sustain myself on blood. See, that doesn't sound very... The needs of eating and drinking will leave you behind in the centuries as a vampire. It's not a need, it's a pleasure. They're, they're different. What if the pleasure that you had was true power and rulership over all? To have your own domain, would it not be worth sacrificing these pastries for it. So you would say giving up pleasure for middle management is more your style? I will be ruler of all this world as soon mm. as it is drowned. Mm. Interesting. This is, uh, this is quite an interesting thing. I'll tell you what. If you can spare me several hundred hectares of land that will float above the ocean. If you will allow me I will have one of my servants knowledge. work out what a hectare is. It's been a while since I've used measurements. 
if you can spare me, if you can allow me to satiate my curiosity during this process, I don't think we'll have any problems. And you wish to become a vampire like me? Oh, no, absolutely not. Very well. Some sort of extended life would be great. Knowledge comes at a cost of time, of course, obviously. Of course. But I don't think I could give up pastry pleasure of some degree. On the Isle of Geth, you must bring me the Mirror of Unseen. So what is actually, um, this is another curiosity thing that I have to ask. What is stopping you from just rising up from the ocean and taking what's yours? Several problems, you know. I'm trying to bring the ocean up, but if I mm. rise too high, I'll encounter mm. moving water and be destroyed instantly. How are you capable of... Oh, you weren't actually there, right? Cool. Mm. But you you couldn't just have one of your many servants who you take over and find it. I'm, I'm curious as to why you're, you're bringing me into the fold. I'm asking for a lot when you could... You know. Would you consider a lot? I consider a speck of a grain of sand along the beach. When you contemplate eternity, your limited scope and requests of pastries are almost meaningless. I will grant them to you ten times over. I see. When the seas rise, you may have every pastry that has ever been created. Well, Bring me the mirror of the unseen. It is the only thing that can stop my plans. With it, my victory will be assured. Okay, well, you're going to have to let us through this magic you have. It's kind of on an automatic magic. process. It'll be done in like 27 hours. Ah. Well, I guess I've got all the time in the world if you're going to grant me immortal life at some point. Well, listen, immortal life. I told you you could become a vampire. You said no. Extended lifespan, definitely. We can talk about it. Oh, yeah. A couple hundred years. Yeah, not bad. How do you feel about consuming elven souls to gain immortality? Uh, Instead of a vampire, we could turn you into something slightly more, you know, hideous, like some sort of uh, amalgam. Mm. I see. You'd be like be half sort of... beast, half man, but you'd still be able to enjoy, you know, pastries and such. You'd have so a like pulse. A... I see. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's basically like elven cannibalism. And what would um, what be my, you know, weakness, my stick to the heart, as it were? A life itself. You know, like so pure like... life energy, like radiant energy would be pretty bad. To literally every single paladin on the face of the planet. Most paladins need to breathe, you know? I'm pretty sure That's we true. can take care of them fairly quickly. Oh, well, I'll tell you what, I'll think about it as I'm finding your mirror. Okay. I'm gonna let your familiar go now. I've, I have been squeezing the life out of her, but, you know, she's weak and pathetic. I know. All right. <laughs> you know, she tried to save a kid once, right? <laughs> uh, there's nothing wrong with that. I wish to save an entire oh. race. My people are extinct. To sacrifice. Yeah, you, you wouldn't save a kid just to end up getting hung and quartered, though. Oh, no. I, I would have... Uh, that's difficult. You know, I barely remember my life. But I was not a necromancer until after I died. I believe I would have saved children then, perhaps. But I was a very different person. Mm, I see. That was a long, long time ago. Almost 40,000 years. And you've been sitting in the bottom of the ocean since then? Yes. 
That kind of sucks. I, you would not believe what falls down here. My servants are great and plentiful and horrifying. My power down here is nigh unlimited. I have but you one like weakness. You got giant octopus or something. Oh yeah, I, get, I got like 15 of them. You want one? <laughs> you when you're powerful thing, enough to control a zombie giant octopus, I will grant you one. Yeah, fuck it. Yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> I love how this guy's like, I'm gonna wipe out all life on Earth, and you're like, well, as long as I can get some pastries and eternal life, sure. <clears throat> I think that's it for this episode. Yeah, uh, Arthur Perkin was like, hey man, would you like to look at the at the terror from the bottom of the deep that's been alive for 4,000 years, and he wants to, you know, hang out and chill with you, or do you want to fight him? And I'm like, fuck, I'll hang out with him. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> Talk about his giant squids, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Next time, I think, will be your final episode. Uh, oh, whether or not you acquire and or deliver the Mirror of Unseen. The one weakness of vampires. Running water. I mean, garlic, sunlight, wood. Vampires have more than one weakness for sure. Good taste. Hey, listen, last <laughs> night I watched the pilot episode of What We Do in the Shadows. They had okay. some pretty good costuming going on. Vampires typically have good fashion sense. Not, I mean, listen, not everyone is Blade, okay? Blade 2 and Blade 3, all right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, you know what You know what I really appreciate? In Vampire the Masquerade, they actually address people having taste in, in, in really interesting ways where they're just like, hey, man, you want to, you, wanna, you know... You want to actually have blood that tastes the way that you like to, it to taste? You can totally do that. It's a process, but you can totally do it. And it's like, okay, good. Good to know. Blood that tastes like pepperoni pizza. How yeah, can you, you live eternity without the pepperoni pizza? You get a guy <laughs> and you feed him entirely only pepperoni pizza for several years. And then you okay. use him as a blood bag. He would definitely <laughs> die from vitamin yeah, nutrition long before uh, that. Well, then you get a couple of socks and you're good, right? Like, <laughs> wow. That's terrifying. Vampire the Masquerade is some real shit. All right, I have a message from James about that vampire game, so I'll have to check that immediately afterwards. You got any projects to announce? Got anything you're working on, Henley? Always, man. I'm always working on everything, but, um, you know... Uh, go check out my Twitter, go check out my TikToks, go check out my Reddits. Um, we got them all. And, you know, things are, things are happening. It's all happening. Right. Next time, when we return, it's going to be a heist. <laughs> <laughs>